Coming up, a break-in at a medical transport facility leaves a company missing thousands of dollars in electronics. And victims and witnesses of a local robbery are refusing to cooperate with police. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News About Asta. I'm Taylor Williams. And I'm Jordan Barella. The robbery of a local business has left owners missing several pieces of electronic equipment. The Valdosta Police Department responded to the theft of over $3,400 worth of tablet computers from a local medical transport company on Sunday at 11 p.m. The VPD responded to a call from the Medical Transport of Georgia located in the city's industrial park. Allegedly, a burglar entered the premises and stole a total of 17 tablet computers from the office area and from several company vehicles which were unlocked. But also the police also are investigating an alleged robbery that took place early Tuesday morning, although the victim and the witnesses are reportedly refusing to cooperate with authorities. At approximately 2 o'clock a.m. Tuesday, a 17-year-old female allegedly visited a friend and men at the scene of the robbery. She reportedly did not know the names of the men, but stated that the men took her property. When she tried to get her property back, one of the men pulled out a gun. Police say one of the witnesses, as well as the victim, are refusing any further cooperation. No one was injured in this event. Christmas is rapidly approaching, which means more shoppers will be carrying large amounts of money. News Valdosta reporter Brittany Williams has the tips on how to shop safely this holiday season. With Christmas right around the corner, many people are out holiday shopping, which does put a target on many shoppers' backs for petty theft as well as online scams. What can shoppers do to avoid falling victim to these crimes? The gift-giving season is here and many shoppers are out at local department stores and malls with large amounts of cash for pricey gift purchases. Here are a couple tips to remain safe while shopping this holiday season. Whenever you go shopping, don't take a large amount of money with you. Only take the amount of money you need to make your purchase. Once you make your purchase, do not place it in your car and leave it to go shopping somewhere else. Go ahead and take your item home. Put it in a safe area. Officer Vernotis Williams also mentioned for shoppers to park in a well-lit and close area to the shopping center. But not only must shoppers be alert for physical thefts, but as well as online scams. Online scams, there's going to be a lot of uh, probably sites online that are possibly trying to sell you something or trying to give away items. Always uh, be aware of what, what, you're, what you're buying. Um, you want to do your research first. If something's too good to be true, if somebody's giving away something for nothing, this probably is too good to be true. And as Lieutenant Kirk explained, shoppers should park close as well as avoid carrying large amounts of cash. And also keep in mind, if it sounds too good to be true, then most likely it is. With News about Asta, I'm Brittany Williams. A new semester is quickly approaching and local educators are encouraging parents to make a New Year's resolution to be more active in the lives of their children. News Valdosta reporter Akira Foster has this report. They say it takes a village to raise a child and they could be right when it comes to a child's education. When families and schools come together as a partnership, it can definitely make a positive difference in a child's education. But just how important is parent involvement in schools? Parent involvement is very important as statistics show that when parents are involved with their child's education that children are more likely to succeed. They're more likely to uh, score higher on tests and to get in less trouble and to enroll in higher education institutions. So that's the importance of parent involvement. With the passing of National Parent Engagement Month and with the beginning of a new semester approaching, schools are urging parents to become an active participant in their child's education. I think it's uh, important for uh, parents to understand the, the process um, and the approach to learning uh, that we uh, take in, in uh, these years um, may be very different from the way uh, parents learned when they were in school. Um, 
much more technology is integrated, um, uh, where parents most likely had a chalkboard, uh, and paper pencil, possibly an overhead uh, projector. Uh, we've got all this uh, vast array of technology um, that will um, help us uh, just take another step uh, into, um, uh, into higher order thinking. That's one thing that we focus on is uh, higher order thinking skills. In schools, teachers do all they can to ensure a child gets a proper education, but it also starts at home. Parents are encouraged to get facts, get connected, and get involved in their child's success in school. With News about Austin, I'm Akira Foster. It's been almost a month since elections have occurred, but campaign signs are still on display. News Valdosta reporter Jennifer Dandron tells us why this may be a problem. As election season comes to a close, citizens of Valdosta are reminded that signs promoting candidates must meet specific regulations. Under the code for the city of Valdosta, signs must not be obtrusive to drivers on the road. Signs litter the highway, but can serve as a distraction to drivers. Jane Robinson, a Valdosta local, says she finds them to be a hazard when she drives. And during election season, when there are so many signs up, I find those very distracting, um, especially in people's yards because you want to turn and look and see what they're talking about. So yes, in general, I find all billboards distracting, but especially the ones that are cramming people's yards during election season. However, driver Danielle Ward feels differently. She says she only pays attention to the signs that matter. Those signs don't really distract me, mostly because I'm paying attention to the other more important road signs um, and uh, political uh, campaign posters that are usually posted in people's yards. I don't feel like they're worth reading. They don't have enough information on them and I don't gain anything from them. If you have a sign in your yard, remember it must meet the National Electric Code before it can be placed. Citizens are encouraged to visit the city's website to review the specific regulations for signs under Code 230-9. For News Valdosta, I'm Jennifer Dandron. In a minute, we'll have an update on how the cold weather can affect your body. And we'll give you an exclusive about new recruits and equipment for the Valdosta Fire Department. We'll be right back. Valdosta State University. Encouraging. In-depth inquiry. Hands-on experience. Service and involvement. And a global view. While offering. A beautiful residential campus. Over 100 fields of study. Graduate and online degrees. And championship athletics. All in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Do more, become more. Valdosta State University. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to News Valdosta. When the weather gets colder, it will get drier and so will your skin. News about Austin reporter Camille Ralston tells us more. December is finally here and colder weather may soon be on its way. Some local skincare officials are urging you to take care of your skin this winter. To help protect your skin from seasonal elements, apply a daily moisturizer, hook up a humidifier, don't take hotter showers when the weather gets colder, and always apply sunscreen when the UV index is high. It's very common to have uh, decreased humidity in the winter time and that results in an increased loss of water across the skin surface and so that results in the dry itchy skin that uh, people often experience in that time of the year. The important stuff is to try to maintain a good moisture barrier on the skin surface and there are lots of different products that can do that. Uh, one that I favor uh, is actually petroleum jelly uh, and the reason for it is that it prevents transepidermal water loss or the transition of water across the skin surface. During the colder seasons, 
the ozone layer is thinning out, which means that there's less ozone layer in our atmosphere to absorb the sun's harmful UV rays. At the end of the day, it's important to protect your skin from the sun's harmful rays and the harsh winds of the fall and winter seasons by using a moisturizer specific to your skin type and products that contain SPF. Be sure to use a daily moisturizer with sunscreen to take care of your skin this winter. With News Valdosta, I'm Camille Ralston. The Valdosta Fire Department is requesting a grant for new equipment. Here's News Valdosta's Mark Mongel with the story. The Valdosta Fire Department is seeking a grant to replace one 100-foot aerial platform, four engines, and ten thermal image cameras. I also meet up with Captain Boutwell to discuss the new initiates in the fire recruit program. After the written exam, which was computer-based, and the physical agility test, then we have the interview process where the candidates are brought in to have an interview panel that asks a series of questions. The candidates have not actually started their fire recruit school yet. First, they must pass their background checks as well as a pre-hire physical before they can actually come on the job and start training. The oldest aerial is currently located at Station 2, which is on 1305 East Park Avenue. The lifespan of the frontline aerial is 20 years. The fire engine, on the other hand, was made in 1998, which makes this truck 16 years old and is also located on East Park Avenue. These engines are made to last about 15 years. The thermal imagers are a bit beyond my expertise, so I'll let you hear how they work. It works off of temperature differences to create an image. And so when we enter a structure that the temperature is obviously warmer because it's a, a structure fire, then we're going to see temperature differences and it throws an image that allows us to locate possible patients to remove that have been trapped. Uh, we have found, actually used thermal imagers, we found dogs that have been in homes. Uh, so they have a lot of uses. Uh, they are crucial for rapid search and rescue in work structure fires. I bet getting some updated thermal imagers would be pretty helpful. The thermal image cameras are super a big asset to the department. Um, you're doing a, when you're doing a search on a house, it makes it uh, thorough, it makes it quicker. For News Valdosta, I'm Mark Mongel. 27 employees for the Technical College System of Georgia, including Dr. Penelope Schmidt, the Executive Director for the Wiregrass Foundation South, will compete in the TCSG Executive Leadership Academy. The Academy is highly selective, and in order to participate, a 10-month commitment is required. Schmidt was nominated by Wiregrass President Dr. Tina Anderson. The organization Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful continues to strive for environmental stewardship by recycling. Reporter Matt Tanga has these details. As the holiday season is approaching and the year is coming to an end, Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful continues to promote their upcoming events for the purpose of beautifying the city of Valdosta. Uh, for the month of December, we're really just playing catch up. Um, we had a lot of events going on in October and November. Over a seven-week span, we had six different events happening. And uh, right now, we're just trying, trying to play catch-up and get all of our data and numbers together from those events uh, so we can wrap those things up. When the holiday season is over, Aaron talked about an event that will occur on January 2015 called Bring One to the Chipper, where Christmas trees can be donated. We're, so we're encouraging folks with their old live Christmas trees to bring those in and they can actually start dropping them off the day after Christmas on December 26. We have a, we'll have a number of uh, drop off sites set up and on the actual chipping day, Saturday, January 3rd, we'll be taking those trees and kind of recycling them and turning them into mulch, chipping them down into mulch and that mulch, uh, you know, residents are welcome to, to come get some of that. In the past, some of it has been used at some local parks. For more information on this event, you can visit Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful's website at klvb.net. For News Valdosta, I'm Matt Tanga. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at our weather with Mark Mongel. So stay with us. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level 7 in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, 
You, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Get your You're not in here. Yes, I am. No, 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 no. Every day, kids no. witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, no. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Welcome back to News About Austin. Now let's take a look at the weather with Mark Mongel. Mark, what's in the forecast? Thanks. Today's weather is looking good. Our high is at 81 with a 61% humidity and no chance of rain. We are looking at partly cloudy skies with a low sitting at 55 degrees. Winds are moving around 3 miles per hour, which is great considering the recent temperature changes. Tonight, our clouds will be sticking around, but temperatures will be staying around 59 degrees. Also tonight, we have a 90% humidity with no chance of rain. It looks like we're going to have some foggy patches tomorrow around 4 a.m. Winds will be moving northeast around 5 miles per hour and should calm after midnight. Tomorrow we are kicking it off early as the sun is expected to rise at 7.15 a.m. We will have partly cloudy skies. Our high tomorrow will be 81 degrees and our low about 55. Winds tomorrow are expected to be moving around 7 miles per hour. We have a small chance of rain tomorrow. Right now we're looking at about a 10% chance. Um, and the UV index for tomorrow is at a 3, which is low on a 12-point scale. This shouldn't be a problem unless you easily burn, and in that case, uh, I would recommend using a sunscreen around SPF 7. There shouldn't be too much to worry about, however, due to the partly cloudy skies. We have almost no pollen to worry about, and uh, that's all for weather. Back to you at the desk. When we come back, we'll take a look at our local sports with Brandy Moore, so stay tuned. Children eat well and move a lot, and move a lot, and move a lot, eat well and move a lot. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Skip a rope Saturday, freeze tag Friday, tap dance Thursday. Children, all the healthy children. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. Trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Welcome back to News About Austin. Now let's check in with Brandy Moore for our local sports. Brandy. Thanks, guys. Last night, Brooks County's girls basketball team defeated Lowndes High. Brooks Trojan Alicia Jertman put up 17 points, while Caitlin Mapp added 14. The Trojans had a 10-point lead by halftime and held on to the lead from then on. The Lowndes County Vikettes tried to make a comeback but in the last two minutes of the game, but it was too late. The final score was 56-44. While the Brooks County ladies took home a win last night, that wasn't the case for the boys. 
Lounge guard Octavius Fudge put up 22 points for his team, while Dylan Jarvis added 20 points and 6 assists. However, the Trojans did put up a good fight. Guard Tavis Mobley put up 17 points, 15 of those points came from 3-pointers, while Leroy Whitlock added 7 points to the Trojan score. The Vikings never let the league go, winning the game 85-45. Valdosta High seniors Brennan Goodson and Davis Postes attended a signing ceremony yesterday for Valdosta State University baseball scholarships. Postes is 6'1 and 191 pounds. He holds a high school record of .328 hits and .448 on base percentages. Eight doubles and 18 stolen bases. Goodson stands 6 feet and 195 pounds. He was ranked in the top 15 for first team kicker and second team punter. VSU's Baseball head coach Greg Gulliams is expecting Goodson to compete with Blazer Bryant Heyman, who is entering his senior season. Remember that Valdosta State University's football team is in their third round of the playoffs. They will go head-to-head -head against West Georgia. The game will be hosted at the Baysmore Hyder Stadium on Saturday at noon. Tickets are on sale right now at the Athletic Ticket Office. The office is located on the east end of the PE complex near the VSU tennis courts. General admission is $10 and $5 for youth and seniors. If you are a season ticket holder, today is your last day to claim your seat. You can do that in person or at the athletic office or by calling the um, office itself. That's all for sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brandy. When we come back, we'll tell you about VSU's upcoming season of Light Show. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Valdosta State University. Quality academics. Caring faculty mentors. A beautiful campus. Opportunities for involvement, leadership, and service. Championship athletics, spirit and pride. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University. Throw away money on wasted electricity. You're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to News Valdosta. The Valdosta State University Planetarium will present its Season of Light show this Friday, December 5th. Shows will start at 7 p.m., continuing 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. Admission is free of charge. Seating is limited to 47 guests per show. Tickets will be distributed beginning at 6 p.m. on a first-come, first-served basis. Tickets are limited to seven per person. The rooftop observatory will be open after each show, weather permitting. The VSU Planetarium is located in room 315 Nevins Hall, 3004 on third floor of Nevins Hall. The Camila and Garden Club will take part of the City of Valdosta's Christmas festivities this weekend. This Saturday, the club's flower show, now in its 50th year. The club's 50th Camila show is scheduled for 1 to 5 p.m. Saturday at First United Methodist Church in downtown Valdosta. That's it for our program today. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Jordan Barella. And I'm Taylor Williams. We'll see you again tomorrow.